Okay, we come to the exercises, question number three, uh, and uh, I wrote it here up on the board. It says, the spring in question number eight is put into simple harmonic motion. If you hang a mass of 500 grams from the spring, what will the period of its motion be? So let's look back at the multiple choice questions, question number eight. Question number eight had said, if you hang a mass of 200, 200 grams on a spring and it stretches by four centimeters, Calculate its spring constant. So we have a spring here. We hung 200 grams from it. That was part of the multiple choice questions. And it was told us that the spring stretched four centimeters. So it stretches four centimeters. So what would its spring constant be? So we use Hooke's law at equals kx. Right now, I'm not focusing on the negative of the Hooke's law, just the absolute value. And uh, we, the spring constant k is equal to f over x. And then x is the amount of the stretch, right? So what is the force here? Well, we have to convert the mass into kilogram, and then from kilogram convert into newtons, right? So k is equal to f over x, f is equal to mg over x. Right? Mg is the weight of this mass. Mg. So how do we convert that to kilogram? 200 divided by 1,000, that's 0 0.2. 0 0.2. Then we multiply that by 9.8 by gravity, and that will give us newtons, right? And then we divide it by how much the string, the spring stretched. The spring stretched by 4 centimeters, but convert 4 centimeters to meters. So it'll be uh, divided by 100. 100 centimeters is one meter. So basically, you're taking the decimal place and you're moving it two places over, 0.04, and that's meters. So you're dividing that, 0.04 meters. So this is Newton per meter will be the units of the spring constant. So 0.2 times 9.8 divided by 0.04. And that gives us 49. And the answer in that problem was actually 49 newtons per meter. So this was previously given as a multiple choice question. And the answer was 49 newtons per meter. Now, in this problem, it's a follow-up to that. Uh, you're, it's saying if you hang a, gram, a mass of 500 grams this time, you stretch it, and then you let go of it, what will the period of the motion be? The period of the motion is the time that it takes to make one complete cycle, okay? So the equation for the period of the motion is two, t is two pi square root of m over k. We are ignoring here the mass of the spring itself, and then we are hanging 500 grams from it this time, 500 grams, right? And actually, interestingly, notice that the period does not matter. It doesn't depend on how much you stretch it. I can stretch it a lot, and it'll still take the same amount of time to go back and forth. I can stretch it a little bit. The reason why it doesn't depend on the stretch amount is because if you stretch it a lot, there will be a lot more force to bring it back. If you stretch it a little bit, it'll, there'll be a lot less force. So overall, the, the, the time that it takes to make one complete cycle is independent of how much you stretch it. Only depends on the mass and the spring constant. The more you hang, the heavier it is, the greater the mass, the period will be larger, right? If the mass is large, the period will be larger. Does that make sense? If I hang 1,000 grams, it's going to take more time to go back and forth, right? 2,000 grams, more time to get back and forth, right? And then the K is on the denominator. That means if it's a very stiff spring, right? If the K is large, then it's gonna take less time to make, to go back and forth once, okay? So whenever you look at an equation, the equation should physically make sense, logically make sense, and it should also have the right units. Look at how the units of this works out. The units of mass are kilogram, the units of the spring constant K are what? Newton per meter, right? Newton per meter. 
So how does that work out? Well, the Newton comes from Newton's law, F equals ma, right? One Newton is the amount of force required to accelerate one kilogram by one meter per second squared. So the Newton is actually a summation, a summary of a kilogram meter per second squared. We happen to call that Newton, named after Isaac Newton, right? So this one here, kilogram divided by, and then the Newton is kilogram meter per second squared, and then you're dividing that by meter, right? So how does that work out? Well, the meter cancels the meter, right? That meter cancels that meter, and then you end up with what? Kilogram per kilogram per second squared. You see? Kilogram per kilogram per second squared. Well, the second squared is going to go to the numerator, and the kilogram is going to cancel the kilogram, and then you just end up with second squared. But then that's square root of that, right? Square root of second squared, so square root of this, square root of this, square root of this, square root of this, and then that gives you seconds and the period is measured in seconds, it's how many seconds it takes to make one complete cycle back and forth, right? So let's calculate the period of this. 2 pi square root of the mass, well this time we are hanging 500 grams, convert that to kilogram, it'll be 0.5 kilogram. You take the 500 gram and you take the decimal places, three places to the left, it's a half a kilogram. Right? You divide that by 49. So 0.5 divided by 49. Okay? Then you square root that to the power 0.5. Right? Then you multiply it by 2 and you multiply it by pi. Okay? So period is going to be 0 0.63 four, six, nine, seven, so on, so on, seconds, right? <clears throat> so about a little bit more than half a second, once you stretch it, right, once you stretch it, that's how many seconds it will take to go all the way up and then back down to the bottom. One complete cycle, 0.6346796 seconds per cycle, okay? Now, if the question had asked, what will the frequency of its motion be? The frequency is the reciprocal of the period, right? So how would we get that? Okay, what is its frequency? What is its frequency? Well, frequency is measured in cycles per second, otherwise known as hertz, right? One hertz is one cycle per second. So since this is seconds per cycle, all we have to do is invert it. The frequency is 1 over the period. So we invert this number. 1.575 uh, and then we can round it up to 6 uh, hertz. Okay? So if it takes going and coming, going all the way and then coming it takes 0.63 seconds this is the other way of looking at it in one second how many cycles will it make how many complete cycles it's going to make one and a half cycles a little bit more than one and a half so that means in one second what is it going to do it's going in one second it's going to go all the way up and it's going to go all the way back down. That's one cycle. Uh, half a cycle would be what? Back all the way up. And then a little bit more than half a cycle. So 1.57. So it's going to go up, down, up. That's a half a cycle. And then a little bit more down. So by the time the second is done, it's going to be like kind of like here. This is the equilibrium. X is 0, right? So it's going to be a little bit above the equilibrium like this, like that. So a complete cycle up, down, up, and then a little bit down. Okay? So that's what it means to say that the frequency is 1.57 cycles per second. It's going to make a little bit more than one and a half cycles for every second. Okay? So the frequency is always the reciprocal of the period.
Thank you very much.